फोर थ्री टू वन वी आर लाइव गुड इवनिंग एंड वॉम वेलकम टू द अनदर से टूडेज स्पीकर इज डॉक्टर तेजस नायक ही इज अ पीडियाट्रिक सर्जन and he is going to speak on a topic which definitely is related to medicine but it's applicable to everyone and very useful to everyone it's about good health is not just about diet exercise and lifestyle most of us feel that uh, when it comes to a good health we focus on what to eat what not to eat how much exercise to do how much uh, different type of exercise but he is going to speak on a completely different idea which is very pertinent for a good health so with that brief introduction i hand over to dr tejas nayak for his talk over to you sir thank you very much uh good evening my friends uh i am not a physician nor uh, a health professional but any doctor any person knows what is health and if we have experience read about scientifically pursued this subject uh, we can find a lot about it and that is why i want to share you with uh, uh, share with you uh, this few uh, things that i have learned then we there is a noise somewhere like lakh rupees ka chitra dolo yo tejas ni bhai thank you diren bhai uh, i would request everybody to keep yourselves muted ashok bhai you have uh, again uh, unmuted yourself yes thank you so if good health is not about diet exercise and lifestyle then what is it about but to know what is more than that what is the fourth factor we must go through these three first so let us see diet how does diet influence us diet influences us about whether we take more or less of diet this can lead to overweight obesity or even malnutrition vitamin and mineral deficiencies the diet may be wrong like too much sugar too much uh, uh, fats a uh, uh, wrong type of chemicals in the diet this can lead to or exacerbate or precipitate diabetes it can uh increase the chances of heart disease kidney diseases some of it can even cause cancers and like spices and all can even cause peptic ulcers in the stomach there may be contaminants in the diet these contaminants can be microorganisms there can be chemicals this can lead to infections poisoning and what in medical terminology is called carcinogens carcinogenic uh, germs mean Uh, chemicals or factors which cause cancers so there can be carcinogens in our diet particularly the packed food uh, and uh, this can lead to cancers but what is very interesting is sudden drastic change to a new diet and diet fads can also be very harmful i have no nothing against these diets they may have something in that like vegan high protein diet Uh, raw vegetables and other fats but we must remember we should not change over suddenly to such a diet uh, regime uh, we should do it slowly sudden change because for uh, hundreds of years thousands of years mankind has eaten particular type of food and we have eaten a particular type of food for decades and we should not suddenly change it without medical advice proper investigations and should do it slowly the second factor in our uh discussion is exercise maaf kar jo diren bhai pan there is a noise if you can stop it yes thank you so our second issue is exercise there can be a lack of exercise which can lead to weight gain weak muscles and weak bones this is worth understanding that exercise influences the bones also diren bhai had taken dr tejas you are muted ma'am you yeah you remain yeah 
Thank you. Yeah, so lack of exercise can lead to weight gain, weak muscles, and even weak bones. Wrong exercise. I mean, suddenly you start doing exercises related to the joints or spine. It can lead to injuries, and even joints can wear out. Wrong methods of bodybuilding, particularly in the modern times, uh, and youngsters in particular, have often used uh, excessive exercise, even steroids and overuse of proteins, particularly proteins, packed proteins, which are not very natural, and they even contain some chemicals. Overuse of these can lead to very serious complications. The third is lifestyle. We are very familiar. One important part of lifestyle is morality, spirituality, and social touch. The science also has proven doubtlessly that these three can give you a healthy and a long life. You'll be surprised that the most important factor for longevity and a health, good health in old age has been found to be a very cordial social touch with your family and friends. So this has mental and bodily illnesses can also be prevented. It has a lot of uh, help and support uh, to our life. Vices like tobacco, hard drugs, excessive use of alcohol, it goes without saying, they can lead to disorders of many organs, heart, lungs, brains, uh, kidneys, uh, liver. They can even cause cancers. We are familiar with that and can lead to even infections. In lifestyle, important thing is stress and poor sleep. These have always been underestimated in past and today they are found to be causing lots of problems, particularly heart diseases, diabetes, stomach and intestinal ulcers, and even mental disorders. And injuries, lifestyle, uh, can also lead to injuries. We are careless in our day-to-day -day routine. We are careless in driving. We fall, uh, and that can lead to pain, fractures, even burns, and major injuries can even cause vital organ damage. So we have gone through diet, exercise, and lifestyle. So what more is there? Even if we modify all these three to ideal level, it still leaves a lot of diseases. There is a scope of a lot of diseases to occur. Then what are the diseases left? Many. Genetic and hereditary. Uh, you will forgive me, I may use medical terms, but I will always explain and I will avoid use of too much medical term. I will convert it into layman's language. Genetic and hereditary are those which are in our genes or they are from our birth. And this cannot be prevented, uh, whatever you do in diet, uh, exercise or lifestyle. Environmental fact. You are living in Delhi. You are living in center of Ahmedabad. You cannot prevent the, the pollution. You are breathing it every day. You are breathing it almost like a smoker. Now, these are the things which are partly beyond our control, and those three factors will not help it. There are other environmental factors like water we drink, the food we, we eat. It is not necessary that only the packaged food or uh, fast food or eating in a, uh, at Lari Galla will cause you problems. Most of the food or some of the food we are actually buying from good shops may also have some factors which are beyond our control. Degenerative diseases basically mean with old age, these diseases are developing like joint problems and others. You can't uh, simply prevent it by those three uh, factors. Cancers of unknown origin. Only very few uh, cancers are known to be preventable by changing their causations, like say tobacco. Like, uh, otherwise, many cancers just occur without known causes. Science has some causes which may not be able, uh, science may not be able to prevent them. Infections, for example, Corona occurred. We took all the care, still most of us developed them. Many other infections, mosquito born and others, food born, water born, can occur. And then injuries. There are certain injuries which are just accidental. I mean, whatever you do to prevent, some injuries are bound to occur. So do you realize these are the diseases which will occur even if we have taken care of diet, exercise, and, and lifestyle? And they may present. The patient would find out, the person would find out in variety of ways. There may be very obvious problems. There might be bleeding, there might be swelling, pain, uh, high fever, and the person would know that something is going wrong. But there might be very minor symptoms, like low fever, uh, one is uneasy, cannot sleep at night, uh, the uh, bowel uh, habit is slightly changed, urine habit is slightly changed, there is less appetite or more appetite. So one may ignore this. And they may be totally silent. You may not know anything. There are so many diseases in the body which can go to extensive extent, high grade, 
and you will not know that they are there. And that is why, particularly tackling these two types of problems, we must compare it with termite. If we have termite like this in our house, what is your first thought? That there might be a lot more occurring inside. There might be a total corrosion inside. And outside there is a small symptom. So these are the diseases I'm talking about. A lot may be going wrong inside your body with very little to see outside. What would you do if you find termite? You just don't wipe it away and forget about it. You will try and investigate. You will try and find out where else it has spread. And once you find it, you will get it treated. If you can do this with termite, why don't we do it with ourselves? And that is why, besides diet, exercise, and lifestyle, the fourth and yet very, very important factor is regular health checkup. Yes, uh, you might be surprised that it is such a simple thing we are, I'm talking. Regular health checkup. Now, health checkup doesn't mean you are investigating for your cardiac problem or hypertension or diabetes. If you are investigating yourself with a, for a known disease, it is not a health checkup. It is checkup for that disease. So health checkup is mainly to find out problems. They are yet not diagnosed. So we are trying to find out what is going wrong in the body without having any problems. And I'm sure some or all of you might feel that I am getting it done. You might even be thinking, uh, okay, now let me get out of this talk. I have nothing more to learn. Bear with me. Let us check that out. You might be wrong. So let us see. Let us go on to health checkup. Regular health checkup, I have divided simply in four types. Now, you might hear think that this is now getting onto a very complicated subject. No, I will just take 20 to 25 minutes more. I'm going to finish it in less than 40 minutes, maybe 35. Now, four types of regular health checkup. And now onwards, I would really request you to remember this. I'm going to pass on a PDF with basic details, but please pay attention to what I'm saying. These are the four types. First group is to be done at any age, but after 40, it should be done every year. The second group of investigations are it should be done every two years after 40. The third group is those investigations which should be done just once after 40 and repeated if something wrong is found. Now, if you repeat if something wrong is found, then I have already told you it is no more a health checkup. Health checkup. Checkup means you are finding something silent. And that is why if you find something, you are in a disease form, and then you further investigate. Same way, there are some investigations which you must get it done at 55 or 60 years and once, and then necessary. I'm sure all of us fall in the first three category, and quite a few of us are in the fourth category also. So let us start with the first group, and that is investigations to be done at any younger age, but to be repeated every year after 40. Now, this list may phase you. I mean, may disturb you. Okay, what is this, Yara? How can we understand this? Please forget it. I'm going to pass on this list to you. They are important. But you can check it later. But now I'm going to go through one by one. And in just one or two sentences, I know that most of us are not doctors here. In just one or two sentences, I'm going to tell you what are they about. First, we go on to laboratory test, and the first is complete blood count. CBC is complete blood count, which basically means hemoglobin, total count, differential count, peripheral smear, etc. This is a very simple and cheap investigation. Some labs might do it for just 200 rupees uh, to 500 rupees, and this gives you such a broad idea about your health. So many things can be detected by this very simple investigation. It can give you general information about health, infections, anemia. And even many blood cancers can be detected by this very simple investigation. Another investigation you all are familiar with is blood sugar, fasting and postprandial. Postprandial means after a meal, two hours after a meal. But the fasting and postprandial blood sugar today is not considered ideal. Today, what is considered is an investigation called HbA1c. HbA1c gives you a chitar, a, a a whole idea about your past three months of uh, blood uh, sugar changes. And that is why actually all three should be done. If you want to get only one done, get only HbA1c done. This is for diabetes. 
Diabetes is high blood sugar uh, because of problems uh, in uh, pancreatic cells. Diabetes, again, I'm uh, drawing a simile. It is like termite. You know that and your entire wooden frames are gone before you know. Diabetes is like termite. It may be eating you up from inside and you would not know it. Not for months, sometimes for years. Why? Because of two things. Because you might ignore very mild symptoms of diabetes which come up. Your physician would tell you. I'm not going into any medical jargon. Or you are not getting your blood sugar checked regularly. And yearly uh, checking is at least a must. Next group of investigations are for kidney, blood urea, serum creatinine, and serum uric acid. Now, forget about this wording. I'm repeatedly, I'm going to tell you, forget about this wording. I do not want to throw the jargon at you, but just understand that these investigations tell you a lot about kidney function, which is a very important organ. SGPT and serum lipid profile. SGPT is a chemical which tells us uh, something about uh, liver health. There are many other investigations, but SGPT is the first to change, and that is why other investigations can follow if something wrong is seen in this investigation. Serum lipid profile is for fat metabolic fats uh, in our blood, not what we eat, not even obesity, but fat in our blood. Please remember. Your obesity has lots of problems, lots of complications. But if your lipid profile remains normal, you are fairly safe as far as your blood vessel circles. Lipids means fat is deposited in blood vessel as a natural aging process. It is called atherosclerosis. And it worsens if one has wrong type of lipids in the blood. So, and that is why we must keep a tab on lipids. Lipids means fatty substances. In males, starting after 40, one should get yearly PSA done. PSA is prostate-specific antigen. Forget about that. This is an investigation for prostatic cancer. Prostatic cancer becomes more and more common with advancing age. We, I remember reading in my medical studies that if one lives up to 100, means if you study prostate of all 100 years old, then 80% of them might have prostate cancer. And that is why this is a fairly common cancer. And if detected early, it can uh, be treated very uh, perfectly and one can have a normal lifespan. Now, this is uh, one uh, uh, investigation which is from blood. It tells you about developing prostatic cancer. This sometimes is wrongly positive. It may be high when you do not have prostate cancer. One may get worried about it. But that worry is just about for a couple of days. I would still say that even though it may be high by other causes, it, is high, it can be high by prostate cancer and should be done. Ru urine routine. This, like the CBC of blood, is a very, very versatile test. It is a simple urine test, routine and microscopic. But it tells you a lot about kidney functioning and many other functions of the body. Microalbumin is an additional investigation. If one is diabetic, that should be done in the urine test. Stool, routine, and microscopy. Stool can give you health of the large intestine, large bowel. It can tell you about infections, ulcers, cancers. It can even tell you about liver conditions because the yellow color of the stool comes from bile, which is produced in liver. So many things can be learned. But I have underlined cancers. Now, please remember the next few sentences. Please pay attention. If there is a cancer developing in large bowel, it generally ulcerates and gives rise to very little bleeding constantly. And that is why if under microscope stool is seen, then they can find out red cells of the blood in the stool. This is called occult blood. Stool may not be red. Stool may not be red. But the microscopic examination can find out that there is blood in it. If the blood comes in repeated samples, then one should get a scopy done, endoscopy done with a telescope, flexible telescope in the large bowel. So stool examination every year is very important. And more so than all these is yearly checkup by your general physician. Your general physician can look after your health. And I mean general physician. Please, there is no necessity to run to a cardiologist for every little thing. Cardiologists will not give you an appointment. They do not have much time. They do not look at other organs. And it may turn out to be more expensive. For your routine health, 
a general physician can look after your liver and lungs and brain and diabetes and heart, everything up to a limit. And that is why the first person to approach every year for your general checkup is your general physician, MD physician, as we call them. ECG is at least something the physician will be doing. Uh, and this, uh, this is an every year routine. So let us go back and finish with the first chapter. This was once at any age and every year after 40. I will also be telling you roughly the costing. This investigation would cost you between 3,000 and 5,000 rupees. Some places you may get it cheaper. If you go in a fancy institute, we were just talking today morning, I gave this talk to a friend, a, a group of friends. We quoted one big hospital in Ahmedabad and they said, this many investigations, they would take 20,000 rupees. You have to find out. I mean, there are many good hospitals. You don't need to go to big corporate hospitals for this. And it is just 3,000. This is once a year. This much you spend for a movie if you go uh, with the family. Once a year. So this is the costing. We come to the next group. And that is less commonly done once in every two years. Now, these are the investigations I will elaborate upon. First, we start with to be done in all males as well as females. First is stress test or treadmill test or TMT. We are all familiar. We walk on a belt, moving belt. ECG is applied to our chest. This investigation is much, much more advanced than a simple ECG because this investigation is putting you under stress. And that is why if there is a minor problem in heart, it will be more visible. And that is why this is an ideal investigation to be done every two yearly. Because as we walk, heart will need more blood. So if the blood vessels are supplying the heart muscle, we call them coronary. All are familiar with the name. If the blood supply is through a narrow coronary, then the heart will suffer. It will like a, inducing a small heart attack. Because heart wants more blood, more blood is not coming through a blocked artery. So it will give indications and further investigations can be done. A very useful investigation. Ladies often think that they are immune to heart diseases. This is a general idea, which is so very, very wrong. Ladies, please, you are as much uh, exposed to heart disease as, as males. Males uh, are uh, maybe protected uh, sometimes more than you. You undergo more stresses also. And that is why these are for both. Ear, nose and throat and dental examination for any problems. This should be done by an ENT or ear, nose, and throat surgeon, better by head and neck cancer surgeon. But if you are going to a head and neck cancer surgeon for a routine investigation, your friends and family would be worried sick. Why did you go to a cancer surgeon? Even though it is for a normal investigation. And that is why ENT surgeon suffices. This can find out early problems and cancers in the mouth, in the throat. Also, it can find out about general health of your voice box, ear, etc. Two yearly. This, please understand, mouth cancers can occur, and all of us have seen. I have one friend uh, who was my printer. Now, one day, uh, two months back, I called him, and his son uh, took the phone. He said, Papa has a cancer. I said, how come? He said he has an advanced cancer of the mouth, and his entire jaw and everything had to be removed. This is a thoroughly gentle person and religious. He has never chewed tobacco. He has never had alcohol. Still, he developed advanced mouth cancer. And that is why, please remember, none of us is immune from these cancers. And early cancers, particularly at the back of the teeth, at the back of the gum, you will not know for a long time. I might be frightening you with this, but that is my purpose. My, one of my friends uh, said in the morning, Tejas Bhai, you go soft. I said, no, I want to hit below the belt. Because unless you are hit, you will not remember that these are the investigations to be done. So forgive me for being forthright about this. A cancer is a forthright disease. If suddenly an advanced cancer is detected, you know. It is like a lightning falling on your house and your, on your family. We don't want that to happen. In that case, we must diagnose cancers early. Though there are many medications have come for cancer, many, uh, improved uh, radiology, ra radiotherapy, uh, but it has been proven again and again and again that 
if you detect cancer early, that is the best way to treat cancers effectively. Full eye checkup with fundus. What is fundus is at the back, the retina. So this must be done properly by your eye surgeon and you must get it uh, done every two years because it will detect cataract, glaucoma. Glaucoma is a hypertension, high pressure of the eye. Also, if one has diabetes, then there are lots of changes can occur in the eye. So two yearly eye checkup is a must. In ladies, in ladies, two investigations are very important. One is mammogram with sonogram. Mammogram is an X-ray study which exposes uh, the breast to a very minimum dose of X-ray. It has been now found out that that much exposure to X-ray is harmless. Mammograph compresses the breast between two plastic sheets and then X-rays are taken. It can detect very small lesions like one centimeter or less. And together with it, at the same time, on another machine in the radiology department, sonograph is done. So mammogram and sonogram are two different investigations done in the same department. And it must be done together, means uh, at the same, on the same day. This is done by an X-ray specialist or a radiologist. This should be done more frequently if a lady is high risk for cancer. Some uh, indications of high risk are uh, cancer in uh, mother or uh, maternal aunt or sister. So uh, if a relative has had this cancer, uh, the person is more at risk. Uh, if one has not born any children, uh, then also one is more, one have not breastfed a child, then also a female lady is more at risk. These ladies must, uh, Parsi uh, community as a whole are at more risk. So if high risk, then this investigation should be done every year. So this is how upper figure you see the breast is compressed between uh, uh, two uh, plastic plates and then X-ray is taken. Below is a sonography. Both these investigations are painless. No needle is introduced into the body. Breast cancer, if detected early, have nearly full recovery and full cure word is not used in cancer in medical terminology. It is called five year survival rate, but nearly 100% success. But if advanced, then the results can be disastrous. Checkup and pap smear by gynecologist. I will not tell you the full form of pap. It is basically a swab taken from the mouth of the uterus. So a gynecologist should check uh, uh, the parts uh, properly. Uh, and many parts of, of uh, the female internal organs are checked by this. And a swab is taken and uh, put. Uh, it is uh, scrubbed on a slide and then sent for examination. This can detect uh, some cancers of this area. And that is why at least two yearly, even though normal, even though there are no problems uh, 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 for the lady, she must visit the gynecologist every two years and insist on getting a pap smear done every two years or even one year. So now this here is where we finish our second group of investigations, and that is uh, this. Let us see costing. This may cost, sorry, it is not 66,000, it is 6,000, forgive uh, the error. This may cost between 4,000 and 6,000 rupees, maybe less or maybe more. Again, this is not a great cost. This is once in two years. The third group. This investigation should be done once and may not be required to repeat, but they may be repeated if some problem is found. So let us go one by one. Vitamin B12, D3, and serum proteins. These are for deficiencies. Uh, if you get this done, 80% of chances are there that you have deficiencies of this. And some of us may be very deficient. Now, very much deficient can lead to lots of problems with other organs, but D3 in particular can lead to weakening of the bones by a disease called osteoporosis. This is thinning of bones, bones break early. Osteoporosis, most of us have attended the lecture and realized that it is a disastrous condition if fractures occur in old age. We have, uh, my grandfather, my grandfather uh, uh, was uh, Gulzar Lal Nandaji, twice prime minister of India. He was moving around at the age of 98. But a friend of his insisted that uh, for some inauguration or something, he was taken to Delhi. And there in the bathroom, he fell down and broke his femur. He was brought back in a private plane to Ahmedabad. And here, 
uh, he remained in the bed for many years, not at 98, sorry, at 90. He remained in bed for nine long years and gradually even lost his, his mental capacity. A great person. And he almost, I can use the word, rotted in bed. Why? Because his bone broke. Why? Because at, in those days, these investigations were not routine either because he must have had osteoporosis. Osteoporosis can demolish a person's health in old age. Once this fracture occurs, many of us must have examples in the family that Maji was all right, my grandfather, my mother was all right, but she fell, broke the bone, and then hell broke loose. She had complications during surgery, she had complications in the hospital, then bed sores occurred, the ulcers on the back, we brought her home, and then she could not talk, and we had to... These are very common stories. Prevent it by getting D3 uh, done, start calcium early. Uh, osteoporosis can be slowed down, prevented, or slightly improved upon. TSH and free T4. This is thyro, uh, th these are thyroid hormones. These detect diseases of a thyroid. Thyroid is an is a, uh, organ in the neck. Thyroid hormones, the chemicals coming out of thyroid have influence on all body parts, particularly heart, brain, and everything. And this can be detected by this simple investigation. Of course, if there is a tumor in thyroid, then sonography can detect it. But otherwise, thyroid function can be detected uh, and treated. Uh, treating the thyroid uh, diseases, which are non-malignant, non-cancerous, is fairly easy if they are diagnosed early. X-ray chest. At one time, X-ray chest was advised every yearly, but it, that is unnecessary. It is for lungs. Once, it should be done after 40 years to find out any major problem and can be repeated if there is some other problem. Echocardiography. Echocardiography is for heart muscles and valves. It tells the function of the heart. It will not tell you whether the bl blood flow to the heart is normal or not through coronary vessels, but it will tell you how strong the heart muscle is, whether it is thin, thick, and its uh, pumping is good or bad. And there are valves. There are four important valves in the heart, whether all of them are working or the blood is going backward where it should not. A very overall a wholesome investigation for heart. And that's why I've told you three investigations for heart ECG every year, and then eco uh, uh, cardiography here we have seen once, and we have al also considered TMT every two years. So they, they can rule out a lot of problems. One more investigation I'm going to tell about heart uh, in the next group. Sonography of, this is a sonography, again, uh, very versatile investigation. It can show you most of the organs and and uh, problems. Problem means tumors or other problems which are visible problem in most of these organs. There are some areas where sonography will fail, uh, uh, like in, inside the intestinal problems and sometimes near pancreas, etc. But we can say 70 to 80 percent of problems can be picked up by sonography, a reasonably priced investigation. MRI of brain, magnetic resonance imaging. MRI is a slightly advanced, more advanced than CAT scan. Please remember, MRI investigation does not involve X-rays. It is harmless even to a pregnant lady. It involves use of magnets and radio frequency uh, waves, and it is harmless to the body. MRI can give wonderful images of the brain, and at least one MRI should be done uh, at 40. My some of my friends have actually argued with me and fought with me, they respect me so that they don't abuse me, but they may. That why MRI should be done. Because if there is any problem in the brain, it would be apparent. No, that is not so. There are some problems which may be from birth. I mean it, from birth. And a person may have lived up to 40, 50, or may even die a normal life, after a normal life. So there can be problems very uh, occasionally. But there can be, and particularly there is one problem in which blood, there is a bunch of blood vessels called arteriovenous malformation. It can bleed anytime. Or early developing cancers also, can, or tumors of the brain can also be there without any symptoms. And that is why one MRI, now this is my opinion, not, even my doctor friends do not believe it. But get it done. Not very expensive. Cost just three to 5,000 rupees. In US, it might be the same amount of dollars. 
three to five thousand dollars. So now these are the investigations uh, that we have talked about. And if we see the costing, then all of these may uh, be done in seven thousand to ten thousand rupees. But that is one time cost and repeated if there are diseases found. Last group of investigations is which should be done once at 55 or 60 year age, carotid Doppler sonography. Forget about again the medical terminology. This is a sonography investigation of blood vessel going to the brain. They are called carotid vessels. So blood art arteries going to the brain can be studied with this. Most of us, probably all of us at this age of 50, 60, 70, develop some blocks in these arteries. Most of the blocks are so minor that we live a normal life with them. But sometimes blood can clot over those blocks and then it can float into the brain causing strokes. So at least one carotid Doppler sonography should be done. It is, um, uh, does not require any injection or anything from outside like sonography it is done. Coronary calcium scoring is a very, very good and important investigation. Most of my uh, learned uh, medical friends have not got it done. But if you ask a cardiologist, he would insist that you should get it done. This is a simple 15, 20 second investigation in a CAT scan. And it costs just about two to 3,000. It shows calcium in coronary arteries. Now, calcium occurs in blocked arteries. The atherosclerosis, I told you what, what blocks the vessels, also has calcium in it. So if there is a lot of calcium seen on this investigation, it means there might be a block, and then the cardiologist will advise you further investigation, and even an angiography may be indicated. So this is a very simple investigation to put you in a category that forget about it, for some years you are safe, or that you may require more investigations for your heart. So high calcium will indicate a block. Bone densitometry by DEXA scan. We have had an, a very nice talk before on uh, osteoporosis. Here at the top, you see uh, the right-sided bone is thinned out bone, can break very easily. There is a very easy investigation. Again, does not require any needle into the body uh, and not very expensive. It is uh, maybe four or 5,000 rupees. And it detects the degree of weakening of the bone. Should be done at least once. And then under the advice of your orthopedic surgeon or radiologist, it can be repeated if necessary. Now, weak, uh, the weak bones can cause fractures. And we have already seen, particularly in ladies, it can cause major problems in old age. Next two group of investigation I put in bracket. This is my opinion and it should be done. They are not very complicated nor expensive either. Lung function test, which is called pulmonary function test or PFT, and HRCT of lung. HRCT basically means high resolution CT scan, CAT scan. These are investigations which give you a very perfect investigation of lungs, particularly if one is a smoker living in very pop, uh, polluted air or having prolonged cough. Now, which population lives in very polluted air? For God's sake, all of us. And that is why. It is good to do this. The uh, lung function test is a very simple test. It takes you just a few minutes. It is done generally by lung specialists. HRCT is done uh, by, cardio by a radiologist, and the pictures like this can be uh, seen. They can find early problems in the uh, lungs. Even early developing cancers can be found, and that is why I would advise that this should be done. And the last investigations are upper and lower scopy of the intestinal tract. So the food pipe and stomach and below the large intestine should be studied by scopy. Now, the colonoscopy or large bowel scopy is very commonly advised in the Western world because their cancers of the colon are very common. They are not common in our country. We should get the occult blood study done of the stool I have to told you about. But upper gastroscopy is worth getting done once. It is slightly unpleasant, not very unpleasant and not very costly. And that is why this group of investigation uh, uh, is uh, uh, at the age of 55 or 60. If all of them are done, including HRCT, etc., it may cost you 10 to 15,000 rupees or maybe slightly more, but it is again a one time cost. So, talking about the cost, do you realize you are paying more for the insurance of your car, which has not been damaged? You are just paying the insurance, which the amount is much more than the cost of your health checkup.
we must spend it but the most important health checkup is done by yourself this is self awareness and self examination by yourself you must remain aware and you can even tell your family member or wife to check your back once in a while which you are unable to see there might be some lesions and mild symptoms may show that there might be a lurking hidden disease you have to be constantly vigilant of yourself about that what are the mild symptoms which can sometimes indicate there might be a major problem low fever weight loss loss of appetite ulcers on skin or in the mouth small lumps anywhere in the body recently developed sore throat going on for a long time cough fatigability getting tired and indigestion and similar mild symptoms continuing for more than a couple of weeks if there is a symptom which is just for a few days and goes away you may forget about it but two weeks is a fairly long time 15 days and if any symptom continues longer than that see a doctor don't get worried because you might be catching some major disease early which actually is our purpose another thing we we don't do many of my friends also do not do is invest in simple health gadgets these are thermometer i wonder if every one of you has a thermometer at home weighing scale this is one of the most important underutilized gadget which is so important for health weigh yourself at least once a week blood pressure instrument whether you have blood pressure or not if there is anybody in your house more than 55 or 60 years invest in this in, uh, instrument it just costs about 1500 rupees or so glucometer glucometer are today are so cheap even if you do not have diabetes at home still get it done and you can check yourselves yourself every month or two months but if there is a diabetic this is not i i always say this is not just an investigation this is a treatment checking properly under the guidance of your uh, uh, doctor uh, by glucometer your blood sugar should be checked how and when you must take advice of your doctor very important pulse oximeter all of us are now expert of pulse oximeter after covid so these are the in, uh, instruments you must have at home so sometime and this has happened so many times with me uh that we have friends relatives who have been detected with a major disease i have my my very good friends a sister three days back he called me ke this we have a breast marking lesion che so i sent him to my good friend in uh, sims hospital this lady from a good family had a large tumor of breast which was already coming out and she also had in the armpit uh the spread of the cancer this should not be happening i mean in family like ours it should not be happening and that is why if you find somebody relative or friend who has suddenly been detected having a major disease heart disease or has passed away we know so many i just to, uh, an hour back i told my wife that uh, there was a coin uh, collector uh, just 35 years old he suddenly passed away if you see this please ask the person if he, he has been detected of a major disease or if somebody has passed away please ask the family that did he get regular health checkup done full health checkup done the answer will surprise you 99% i might say 100% they did not get themselves checked checking up does not prevent a disease my friends checking up get uh, catches a disease early when you can treat it properly and that is why basically to conclude if you are above 55 and have not gone even one of these done please go and get all of them done because above 55 you fall into a category where all the investigation i have mentioned should be done please see that all of them are done now what diseases do have we seen they can find these investigations the disease of uterus and ovaries of bladder and prostate of large bowel kidneys spleen liver bones heart lungs blood and metabolism thyroid ear nose and throat eyes and brain these investigations scan all these parts of your body and i am not saying that you are guaranteed a healthy 100 years but 
these investigations will surely diagnose 70 to 80 percent or more of hidden major diseases and that will allow early treatment avoiding devastating surprises which will destroy your family and yourself thank you very much i am dr tejas nayak this is my email and this pdf will be ready with me i will be putting it on stories to tell group and other groups uh, if my friends have attended from other groups but you can send me a message and i will pass on the pdf just the the four basic li lists not the entire talk which will which will matter the most thank you very much yeah, thank you, Tejas Bhai, for excellent uh, explanation about the basic tests, which are very important for everyone. And you rightly say that uh, these investigations, they don't prevent disease. They are basically to pick up the disease early so that we can treat it well. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So right. now it's open for questioning. So please raise the hand function, uh, which is there in the Zoom meeting, and we will come to know that you are keen to ask questions. Darshan, be mute, unmute yourself. Yeah, uh, Dr. Yatin Parikh, please. Please unmute yourself and ask question. Good evening to all, sir. Uh, uh, your video, please. Yeah, uh, Darshan, bhai in the meanwhile. Good evening to all, sir. Haji Yatin, bhai. Ha, sir. Sir, my question is that D3 is a very important role, uh, particularly in bone disease. Yes. So, sir, I know that after 40, uh, multivitamin tablets are very important in market. So, I have a question about the meeting related to the meeting. But after 40, we have to take multivitamin tablets, sir. Regular health checkup. Tamara Javini, Yatin Bai is an extensive cyclist and a Savarna message on a charvaga. And then he cycles. He was fairly overweight. He cycles two, three hours every morning. He's a very, very sought after teacher in Gandhinagar and a very good photographer. Uh, Yatin bhai, uh, vitamins mate ho ke, vitamins jo regularly leva tha, teno role ocho che, amuk vitamin khas leva jo ye, jo tamare deficiencies hoy, to e lithela vadhare sara, regularly leva ma kaik tamare lai shago, but there is no particular advice. As far as D3 and bones are concerned, we have an expert amongst us, uh, Dr. Diren bhai, please answer. Yeah, that's very important. Like if you have measured your vitamin D level and if it is low, then it is better to uh, take vitamin D supplementation for a short period and bring your level to the normal level. Once we reach the normal limit, then we just have to continue maintenance dose of vitamin D. But yes, it's very important for bone health. And uh, like there are three pillars, the calcium, vitamin D and exercise. Most of the people, they believe that if we do uh, good exercise and if we take adequate calcium, then there is no role of vitamin D. But if we don't have all the three together, then we will not get the benefit of it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Haji, Thank you. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Darshan Bhai. Yeah, Dr. Darshan Bhai, please. Unmute yourself. Darshan Bhai, unmute yourself. In the meanwhile, uh, uh, Shanbhai, on the uh, top right corner, there will be a word unmute or on this red, red mic, you can click. Yes, uh, Dhirenvi, you can. Uh, yeah. The next question. Yeah, Dr. Minakshi Ben. Uh, yeah. Dr. Tejas, as usual, you've given us so much to uh, think about. It was a lovely presentation and so much of information. I have one question. Uh, I don't know whether it's the scientific uh, the data that you get constantly, where they say that the diabetes cutoff is seven. 
your HP one A C is seven, and then by the time it is six point two, you're already borderline diabetes, and then they say, okay, you need to take your tablets, maybe a metformin or something, and you're so scared because diabetes is a killer. So um, what do we do? Because uh, you have to listen to the doctor. And so by the time you're 6.2, 6.5, you're already hooked on to those medications. While seven is the cutoff. What, what is your take on no, it? No, no. They keep on lowering the cutoff, ma'am, like lipids. You know, today only in the morning we discussed when I, when I delivered this presentation to doctors that they were lowered to, didn't we, what level? 5.9? Yeah, it's 5.9. Now they are lowered to, and that just simple adjustment put one crore people in the pre-diabetic zone where they would be worried and maybe because of worry they will have more diabetes. For this, we should have a physician on the group. Uh, uh, is Dr. Madhav here? Uh, no, he's Abhra not Abhra here. Abhra. Uh, Dhiran no, bhai. He's not. Uh, then in absence of a physician, I would consider Dhiran bhai as the best person to comment on this. Yeah, so we had a discussion on this question today morning. And uh, what you said is right that uh, if we lower the limit, then definitely a large number of people, population is considered as a pre-diabetic. But the reason is that pre-diabetic are, are also vulnerable for heart problem. And so it's very important that uh, we start taking the treatment. Now, the treatment in this group is not medicine. The treatment at this group or at that range of uh, glycosylated hemoglobin is mainly lifestyle modification in the form of exercise, weight reduction, and diet control. So don't go with the idea that uh, it's a pharma company driven uh, things, which is uh, trying to take you into the uh, medicine and they want to promote their medicine. No, it's not like that. There are good scientific data which says that, yes, this group is also vulnerable. So, I hope uh, like uh, your, your query has been answered. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Sukumar Bhai, please. Yeah. Sukumar Bhai. Yeah, yeah Diran Bhai, uh, you have very nicely elaborated about the diabetes, blood sugar levels, and acceptable and normal HbA1c. And Tejas Pai also has said that uh, we are uh, progressively lowering the acceptable limits and what we call normal. And the same thing is happening in in case of uh, high hypertension, high blood pressure. And nowadays, any blood pressure more than 130 systolic and 85 diastolic is not acceptable and it is putting us to a risk. Similarly, the cholesterol levels, LDL cholesterol, uh, cholesterol levels also once the person has got a bypass or an angioplasty, his LDL should become less than 70 and aggressive cholesterol control is recommended. And uh, this is for our benefit. This is all research and I believe this is all honest uh, uh, research and recommendation. And in social media, we often get messages that this is all pharma driven and industry driven and all that. But my belief is that these messages may be misguiding. And we have all seen some single message from Washington Post in the past and that declared that now cholesterol is officially off the list of risk factors for coronary artery disease. But that's the only isolated report, but it has become very viral and circulated very widely. But I still feel that whatever levels are recommended, they are uh, recommended by the task force consisting of experts and we should not discard them or ignore them just thinking that it's a marketing gimmick. Yeah, very well said, Sukumar Bay. Thank you. Uh, Sukumar Bay, uh, now that you are on the, I would I like to ask you, uh, was it uh, correct when I mentioned the role of ECG, TMT, uh, and uh, ECO, uh, and calcium scoring? You are the best person to comment on that. <laughs> Tejas Bay, you explained so lucidly that I did not want to change the frequency of the message that you gave. But okay. I, since you have asked, I am compelled to change the frequency of the message yeah. that uh, the, sometimes uh, there is a wrong impression that my ECG is normal and my echocardiography is normal. So my heart is normal. Oh. And that's a misconception many people get. Yeah. Uh, let me clarify two things about ECG, one about ECG and one about echocardiography. Let me first pick up the echocardiography. Many times we undergo echocardiography. As you said, it shows the function of the heart, the pumping efficiency of the heart, the heart valves and everything. But echocardiography does not tell us or does not show us on the screen 
blood uh, the coronary arteries and so uh, nowadays some, there are some good doctors who print at the bottom of their echocardiography report that this is just uh, what is seen on the screen but this doesn't mean that you have a normal heart a normal report doesn't mean that you have a normal heart so that is one clarification and if we are interested or if we are suspecting something wrong with the coronaries like blockages or something uh, echocardiography we should not stop at that level and further investigation should be done second thing about uh, ecg if somebody has got a normal ecg it is very good but let me clarify that ecg has got no predictive value and i have to often tell my patients who just show me a series of ecg that look doctor i have got five ecgs six ecgs all my ecgs are normal but they are symptomatic and symptoms are suspicious of coronary artery disease or angina so i have to tell them that look you have symptoms normal ecg doesn't have any predictive value for example if a person has got a normal ecg at 11:55 am he could be dead at 11:56 am so let us not make the mistake of relying only on ecg and be happy that ecg is normal similarly let us not be happy that our echocardiography is normal so everything is normal so that's where the utility of the treadmill test comes and the treadmill test is a very useful test in predicting the ischemia or the lack of blood supply to the heart when the person is exercising so in spite of ecg or echo being normal sometimes we have to send the people for treadmill test and treadmill test predictive value for coronary artery disease is about 70 to 80% so it's a fairly good investigation as far as the prediction is concerned so ecg let me again repeat ecg and echocardiography show our present and the past but they don't show our future if we are interested in finding out what our future is then treadmill test calcium scoring and coronary angiography so basically you are roughly saying that what i said was approximately all right yes absolutely thank you dr yeah, nila ben nila ben nila ben yes I want to say, I mean, a lot of stress through this revision has come up. And then, Biju, I want to tell you that recently I have heard about something which I would like to share with you all. Also, am I able to say that when a Brahman is born, he is a lot of food. So, am I able to say that a Brahman is born, he is a lot of food. So, am I able to say that a Brahman is born, he is a lot of food. So, am I able to say that a Brahman is born, अमे रोज रात्र एम के दस किसमिश लर अर्धु लींबू नीचव्या रात आखी रेवा दिए बीजे दिवस सवार नरणे कोठे ए खाई एट अमरु आ बधु नॉर्मल रहे नाउ आई डोट नो हाउ मच टू बिलीव दीस बट दीज आर फेक्ट्स विच आई हेव हर्ड फ्रॉम Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yes. Now, uh, having lots of sugar and not having diabetes, ma'am, it is not necessary that uh, having lot of sugar always gives diabetes. Diabetes, uh, excessive sugar can precipitate diabetes, but diabetes can have uh, many other causes. And high sugar uh, eaters uh, may become obese, but not all of them will have diabetes. If it is a subclinical diabetes, it will be precipitated. Otherwise. No, uh, Uh, otherwise that uh, uh, lemon over uh, the this uh, kishmish is, is uh, there are lots of, all of us have something here and there uh, science has never proven their worth it is faith that matters and that is why you may take it but doing that you are again taking some more sugar basically sugar is a killer formerly it was considered that fats and salt are killers today the modern science teaches us sugar is a killer particularly sugar which is sweet means carbohydrate which is sweet like like uh, sugar in particular and that sugar any form even in fruits or honey all have similar damaging effect on the body and that is why don't go by the fact that even though they eat sugar they are not diabetic they are not they no, but am i eu che ke amne em bhi kehva ma aviu ke bija ekad be jana eva ta they were already diabetics and with this धीरेन्द्र 
Yeah, so the point is like high sugar intake leads to diabetes in a small number of patients. But if you look at the other way around, diabetics should definitely avoid taking high quantity of sugar. There is no question about it. Whether you add it uh, lemon or X, Y, Z, sugar remains sugar and body has to metabolize that. And diabetics are not capable of metabolizing the high quantity of sugar. So it's better we avoid that. So that would be the, in short, I would answer to your query. So let's move to the next question. Dr. Dinkar was willing to ask question. Dr. Dinkar. I want to ask you one question about reverse diabetes. Uh, uh, madam, at this stage, we, we, do, uh, with the today's about. lecture. Yeah, so we, we remain stick to the today's lecture. So if you okay. have any question related to uh, the health checkup, definitely Tejas Bhai will be happy to answer those questions. Okay. Ajay Dinkar Bhai. Unmute yourself, Dinkar Bhai. Aap Darshan Bhai Nej ko ek rite kai shako kai rite unmute kari shake. Okay, we will take only the last question because already we are running uh, short of time. Yeah, Dhiran Bhai, the last question. Please unmute yourself. Uh, thank you, Tejas Bhai and uh, Dhiran Bhai for wonderful uh, explanations of uh, all the details. I have just one small question for Dhiran Bhai. You said that uh, there is some maintenance level of D3 which should be taken uh, at old age. So could you please tell uh, what is the level of D3? Okay, yeah. The normal uh, level of D3 is more than 30 units, international unit. If your vitamin D level is this much, that means that your body has a sufficient vitamin D level at this stage. Now, we need to give a maintenance dose because Gujarati diet or vegetarian diet is not rich in vitamin D and our body needs vitamin D. So we have to give it as a maintenance dose. So how much maintenance dose? Okay. Uh, there are different regime. The simple regime, which I usually suggest to my patient or which I follow is taking 60,000 unit of vitamin D once a month. That is what I do as a maintenance level. 60,000. So yeah, and 60, the, uh, there are two uh, um, people uh, um, talk about it. One is taking it every day, 2,000 um, uh, and uh, uh, once in a month, 60,000. So More or less the uh, same thing. Is a, no, no, both, both are, are same. same. Both are same. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it is not like uh, other vitamins of... Um, uh, um, like vitamin C, which you take, um, uh, I mean, high dose at a time doesn't help. And it should be taken every day kind. No, see, this is a fat soluble vitamin. So taking once a month is also adequate. And whatever you take remains in the body. So it's not necessary that we take it every day. There are injections available also, which we take it, uh, we can take it once a year. But then mm -hmm. it's an injection. So... Okay. The simple form, uh, the format or the dose which I recommend is 60,000 unit once a month. Uh, Dhiran, we are, we are taking uh, half a tablet, means 30,000 a week. Uh, will that become too much? I, I will be a bit worried, but in that case, it's better to measure your vitamin D at least once a year so that uh, it's not going more than 100 unit, uh, international unit. That's the, um, that will be my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dhirin Bhai. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So now we are at the end of the program. And uh, once again, I thank uh, Dr. Tejas Bhai for beautifully explaining and explaining very importantly that taking care of your body in the form of diet exercise is not adequate. You also need to pick up the diseases which are silent. And that is very important. And time and again, we see that our friend, they went for a routine health checkup. And unfortunately, or fortunately, something was identified. 
but the most important thing at that stage the doctors were able to take care of that condition very well because it was just a beginning of the disease so what tejas bhai said is a very important message and uh, he will be circulating about uh, the list of investigation to all of us so we suggest that please try to implement that in the practice and definitely we will get advantage of it so with that thank you once again dr tejas bhai yeah please last yeah, comment last, please l- last word yeah friends please remember the cost is not an important thing and still i'm saying these are not costly investigation that is a, a one thing that even my doctor friends have told me mri ct scan but i have told you the cost factor which is not great even great it is worthwhile but actually it is not a great cost thank you yeah thank you once again and thank you ortho tv for making this program uh, live and making it available on the youtube thank you and bye bye thank you thank you thank you uh madam i am sitting if you are waiting diren bhai acha he left thank you very much sir khubas samari ne anand at at present i am affected but i don't have any disease no no bp no sugar nothing else but present. still still you must get it checked par mo regular hu check checking karau chu abhi na par aa badha na kabara koi friend nahi kara me bhi atla badha nahi kara aa badha j karavana खबर पड़ी जैसे जॉइन कर शुक्ला साहेब नीला बेन हाजी गुड इवनिंग थैंक यू वेरी मच बहुत सारी इन्फॉर्मेटिव मू जस्ट आई वोज क्यूरियस के हेव यू एवर हर्ड आई हर्ड डॉक्टर बी एम हेगड़े सम डाउन द लाइन टेन फिफ्टीन इयर्स ए गो हु हेपन टू बी डीन इन मद्रास मेडिकल कॉलेज हेव यू हर्ड अबाउट इज नेम नो डॉक्टर बी एम हेगड़े वट वॉट डिड यू एडवाइज ही इज अ रिनाउंड फिजिशियन एंड टीचर बिकॉज he happened to be the dean and he said about uh, the other way round you know it is not necessary yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> not not exactly uh, but what he said that it's a market driven pharmaceutical driven uh, i believe as a neurosurgeon that it's not totally true but what he said as you have rightly mentioned that lowering the limits of hba1c many people will turn into pre diabetic and they worry and then they will get diabetes but that is what uh, yeah but that is what so, we need to know and and mri no me barabar kayo ke nahi sahab yeah mri no saru ko and avm is really you oh, mentioned it oh. perfectly that it is bound yeah, to early keep, your uh, early brain tumors are also silent yeah, yeah of course and in some silent areas we come across within very short history say yes. 20 days and the patient is uh, devastating and morbid yes खुश कर they are not causing yeah. any complications you know there is no radiation this is just one needle yeah. prick so yeah, yeah. i would consider them ab tumhe mai bo elaborate na karyu karan ke doctors ne samajh pade evu che ab mai psa kayu ne prostate nu to mai bo ek sara mitra che young very versatile and busy uh, urosurgeon mane ke tejasvi hame nahi advise karta karan ke positive aave ne 
uh, and it has a very high false positive rate. So, people don't have to worry about the investigation, they don't have to worry about the cancer check. And if there is no other parameters, there are symptoms that are not going to be able to do it. But I mean, why not uh, do it and false uh, positive come out, then they investigate it. I, hmm. uh, I would believe that way. Yeah, I support your suggestions that one should get it done. And especially in layman, it's very Haan, necessary. So. Yeah. Yeah. See, uh, basically, the, the, the our routine was to a health checkup is simple uh, regimes. Simple advice. And if you complicate it, you don't have symptoms, you don't have to do it. 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 You don't have Entirely generated by me. Uh, with yeah. discussions yeah. with friends and uh, reading and everything. But it looks logical. It yeah, logical. yeah, it yeah. is logical. And one such question, Emma King Nikla, I suppose the MRI Maki Nikle, Topachi, you see a neurosurgeon and he would further advise, forget it, or suppose the Juna tuberculum, the sugar, forget it. It was a senator, madam. Yeah, yeah. They talk Kain Nikla, suppose aneurysm Kain Nikla, to Tame further, you will advise accordingly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. And prognosticate, yeah, yeah. We can uh, tell them about red flags and all. What to do next? Yeah, yeah. Even Nila's sister, elder sister, is a scientist in US. Twenty years back, she uh. told her that Nila uh, Pap smear is so common here. Yes. And people above forty should get it done. Get it done. Uh, yeah, get it done. Yeah. Our wives, our sisters, mothers. I don't think yeah. ten percent we can do. Even self-breast examination is also advocated yes, in yes. some of the guys. I said that the most important thing is self-assessment, self-examination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we all have ulcers and all of them have to ignore it. I gave an example of this month ago. There was a printer in the first month. And in my house, I was very young. And I was young man, 45. And I was operating on the first month. Extensive malignancy. Non-tobacco chewer. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. I said that your lecture worth it. was ah. worth it. And boss, <laughs> koi, mara koi doctor friend did not do I wonder if you did it too. 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 Do you with, uh, with uh, <laughs> NGO? No, no. No, no. You did it too. I did it too. You did it too. I got it. I got it done. <laughs> it got it done. And mare, surprisingly, my sister Abhilasha, Mane had a report on the report. America hmm. report one chose so, the Manaka uh, Tejas Abra Papajine uh, bleed her subarachno oh. and a way cover Padezeke and Urism Sadakali hypertension of bleed Natada. Yeah, yeah. So, an hmm. an aneurysm hmm. is known to family hoy. So, I put like that. May Pandar was a spell on me ever cut a caravan. Okay. Now, my city brain caravan, MR nothing. 